Hello and welcome. It's great to have you join us. I'm really excited for today and the news that we must share with you. Did you know that there is a frequency gap of up to 16x when combining different manufacturing technologies in heterogeneous 3D integrated circuits? In this work, we will propose a cost efficient solution to bridge this large frequency gap in network on chips by employing technology specific router architectures. It's amazing to see that 3D integration has become one of the most promising paradigms to tackle the limitations of today's integrated circuits. It allows to improve nearly all chip measurements, such as area, power, and performance. This has been demonstrated for many architectures. For instance, distribution of SRAM among dies improves the architecture of CPUs, which has been shown in this work with up to 25% improved in performance and 39% improved energy. Heterogeneous 3D integration is game-changing. In homogeneous 3D integration, the technology of all dyes are equivalent. In heterogeneous 3D integration, the technologies of dyes are aligned with the requirements of components. This allows to combine technology nodes optimized for logic, for mixed signal processing and for memory in a single IC. For instance, we recently demonstrated the advantages to split memory and processing for RISC-V cores between two dies with large power advantages. Intel's Lakefield architecture using Forest 3D technology is one example for a commercial product that is also using heterogeneous 3D integration. If you want to employ an NOC in a heterogeneous 3D setting, there are two very challenging integration issues. The first one is varying area. In a previous work, we have shown that this can be used to improve PPA. The second one is much more challenging and the scope of this work. It is varying clock frequency. So if I use the same router architecture in all layers, there will be a clock frequency gap that is as large as 16x. We have shown this in this slide here with a short graph that combines uh, 180 nanometer mixed signal technology with different digital technologies. Please note that these are academic examples and can be applied to uh, more modern technologies as well. The important key thing here is the difference between the technologies. So this is like a difference factor of one to two. So for instance, if you would combine state-of-the-art technology, this could also be a 30 nanometer mixed signal node while this is then a 50 nanometer digital node. And you can see that there is a clock factor, and this is between 4x to 16x for this um, different technology nodes here. And this is a really large clock factor, and why is that relevant? Because this large clock frequency gap limits the NOC performance. Because at the end of the day, your slowest knock router dominates the performance of the whole NOC. So this has been our observation that there is a frequency gap in heterogeneous 3D ICs that limits the performance of 3D NOCs. And within our agenda today, I would at next like to take a look at the existing solutions. So what can we do with routers in non-purely synchronous networks? Then we will propose our solution, which is more cost efficient and has a higher performance. And we will use technology-specific NOC router architectures. In our results section, we will evaluate power, performance, and area, and we will especially take a look at synthetic and parsec benchmarks. And we can conclude that we are able to improve network latency and throughput, but also reduce the area and power, which is quite a nice result. So, we started with our observation that there is the frequency gap in heterogeneous 3D ICs, and now let's take a look at existing solutions, how a NOC architect could tackle this. So the starting point again is that there's a frequency gap of 4 to 16x with mixed signal versus digital nodes. So what does that mean? That means that the flit latency varies. So a flit sent in one layer, like the whole same physical distance, will have a different latency than in the other layer,
because routers are clocked faster or slower. But this also means that your throughput is limited by the slowest router in your system. So what can we do about this? And the conventional approach here, the baseline approach, would be to apply a homogeneous synchronous router. And that's not really good, because at the end of the day, your latency and your throughput is limited by the slowest clock frequency in your network. So you don't really want to do that. So then you could say, okay, let's just use an asynchronous design. So let's use asynchronous routers. And what we would also show again in this work is, yes, that will improve your latency, but then your throughput is still limited by your slowest router. And also like, your physical design is relatively complex and your synchronization logic requires around 10% area overhead. So not the best uh, design here. So let's take a look at the next approach that we proposed in a previous work that was our idea to use pseudo-mesochronous routers. So what they will give you is they will tackle this throughput limitation and we showed that up to 2x better throughput is easily achievable. But we had some costs here, so we had to use non-standard routing algorithms and in the previous work we showed, and also it's in our paper as a detail, that this will yield up to 512x load difference between layers depending on your technology setting and this might be really hard to tackle from an architectural optimization. And then you will have a relatively low yield because you need a high number of vertical links and also you have again the area overhead because you still need some well, synchronization logic even though it's less complex than for the asynchronous design it's still there. So this also might not be the best way to go. So we think that there is a need for an architectural approach and this is what we are going to do today. So let's go from the existing solutions to our solution. Technology specific not router architectures. So what we have observed is that existing solutions are either limited by the slowest clock frequency or yield an area overhead due for, for, uh, from synchronization logic. So we want to tackle this and our idea was to apply a heterogeneous but synchronous architecture. So to apply heterogeneity on an architecture level and then we could be able to make the design synchronous again, removing the area overhead. And our observation was that VC-less routers will have a higher clock frequency than routers with VCs naturally. So to prove that a little bit in more detail, we synchronized different routers for 30 nanometer mix signal and 50 nanometer digital open NAND gate cell te library technology. And um, we used a 3D NOC with 8x8x2 eight cross eight cross mesh and XYZ routing. And what you can see here at the bottom of the slide is that um, depending on whether you use a VC-less router or a router with, with VCs, you can achieve a higher clock frequency. So for the digital node, for the VC-less routers, you can achieve up to 4 GHz of clock frequency and 2 GHz of clock frequency for a router with VCs in our setting. And for the mid signal node, you approximately have one fourth of the performance, so 1 GHz of clock frequency without VCs and 0.5 GHz of clock frequency when using VCs. So what does that mean in terms of different architecture designs? And so we take now a look at all three existing solutions and also our solution. What does that mean here in terms of network architecture, but also in terms of timing? So if you would use our synthesis results from the previous slide and just build this baseline design of a homogeneous and synchronous architecture, you would see that your architecture is homogeneous. So you use VC routers in both layers. But then your clock frequency must also be synchronous. So you are limited by the slowest clock frequency, which was 0.5 GHz in our example, in both layers, even though in the digital node you could potentially clock the, uh, the, clock the router faster. If you're using an asynchronous design, again, again, your architecture is homogeneous, so you're using routers with VCs on both layers. But then you have an asynchronous uh, clock frequency, so you can clock both routers as fast as possible, which will yield 2 GHz in the digital and 0.5 GHz in the mixed signal technology. In terms of this pseudo mesosynchronous design, it is again a homogeneous design in terms of the VCs, but we call it heterogeneous here because we have to use these special routing algorithms which apply heterogeneous traffic loads to the network. So this is why we call it a heterogeneous network architecture. And then it's a 
mesochronous design. So you have an integer offset between the clock frequencies. And here, just for the sake of the example, we chose again 2 GHz and 0.5 GHz. And finally, our optimized design, which we are proposing here, is to use an actual heterogeneous architecture in terms of the number of VCs. So we use routers with VCs in the digital node where clock frequencies can easily get high, but we use a VC-less router in the mixed signal node, and by that we can achieve a synchronous design which clocks at the fastest possible clock speed of your mixed signal uh, routers, and that's one gigahertz. And this is really nice, because we now can use a synchronous design by using a heterogeneous architecture. So this is our solution, technology-specific NOC router architectures. Let's take a look at the results. So what can we achieve with that? So first we take a look at power performance and area as a whole, and we compare our optimized architecture against the three, exi against the three existing solutions. We use an 8 cross 8 cross 2 NOC with 4 flits per packet and XYZ routing and 4 VCs. There are different network configurations in our paper, so if you want to check them out, feel free to take a look at the paper. The results are similar, so we only present one example here. For all designs, we are comparing TSVs for stacking 3D integration, MIVs for monolithic integration, and face-to-face -face bonding for just doing flip chip design with two layers. Versus the baseline design, what you can find is that we improve area by around 50% here, so 48 to 49%. And we also improved power by around 4%. Then we see that our average fit latency for uniform random traffic pattern is improved by 30%, and we have 50% higher throughput. So our architecture really performs well in comparison against the baseline architecture. If we take a look at the asynchronous design, we will have a higher area overhead due to the synchronization logic. We didn't assess this in more detail here because we didn't want to synchronize a synchronization logic which really depends on physical design constraints. So we thought that this is not a scientific approach to do a more in-depth comparison here. And also we saved the power comparison for the, same, um, for the same argument. More interesting are the results for performance. So what you can see is that actually the asynchronous design outperforms in terms of flit latency by 6%, our proposed design, but we achieve a 50% higher throughput. Comparing against the pseudo-mesochronous router, again, the same argument holds for the area overhead, but we will have 10% additional overhead for our pseudo-mesochronous um, synchronization and the higher number of TSVs or MIVs that you need. So this is like why we have um, higher area requirements here. And again, we save the power results because we think it's too difficult to assess them in terms of the actual techni technological constraints. In terms of flit latency, we see that we can improve by 35% here, but our maximum throughput is the same in both designs. So to sum it up, in terms of area and power, our design is better. That's really cool. In terms of average flit latency, the story is not that clear. So depending on which, against which architecture you compare, you either have a positive or a negative impact on performance. So we have to do a more in-depth analysis here in the next slides. And taking a look at maximum throughput, we see that we improve in all cases except for one where we are the same. So that's really cool. So before taking a closer look at the performance figures, I just want to highlight the area and power numbers again, in dependency of how many VCs you have. So let's take a look at area and power. And so on the x-axis here, you have the number of VCs, and on the y-axis, you have the area savings of our optimized architecture compared versus the baseline. And what you can see is that you save area for all designs, but if you had more VCs in your baseline design, then you will save more area between 30% up to 60% for 2 to 8 VCs. So that's really cool. In terms of power, it's a little bit more difficult. So what you can see here is on the x-axis the number of VCs again, on the y-axis the power savings of our optimized architecture compared to the baseline architecture, and as you can see, only after four VCs you actually save power. So for less than four VCs, your design is more um, power hungry if you use our proposed architectural optimization. Anyway, since most designs use more than two or three VCs, we find that this is a really positive finding. 
So in the previous slide, I told you that the performance figures are not that clear. So let's take a closer look at them. And first we took a look at uniform random traffic, again for the same network um, as given in the previous slides. But then now we changed the ejection rate. And um, so basically we changed from 0.2% uh, flip per cycle ejection rate to 1.8% flip per cycle ejection rate for this specific design. And so you can see four um, graphs here and our optimized one is the purple one, which is also highlighted by an arrow here, which is in the middle somewhat. So what you can see is that a higher flip latency is a worse network performance here. So lower is better. And you can see that there are two graphs that are above our optimized architecture, and those is the conventional baseline design and also the pseudomism constructor. So we are clearly outperforming them. But then in comparison against the asynchronous design, you can see that the asynchronous design actually outperforms us. So that's really an interesting finding and something that we wanted to investigate further with real-world traffic patterns. To summarize this here is that you will find similar trends or the same order of performance with similar trends in different network configurations as well. So this is like, as you can see in the paper, not a finding that is specific to this one NOC architecture, it is independent of the architecture. So to summarize, baseline and pseudonymous synchronous routers are between 20 and 47% slower, while our asynchronous architecture is something between uh, 6 to 30% uh, faster against us. So in terms of um, latency, you would probably prefer the asynchronous architecture of our optimized one, if you only take a look at uniform random traffic. But now let's take a look at real-world benchmarks, and there the story is not so clear. And this is, I think, a really important finding here. So first again, we have better performance in comparison versus the baseline and the pseudomism cross routers. So here on the x-axis, what you see are different um, benchmarks from the Parsec benchmark suite. And then on the y-axis, you have the flit latency normalized to our optimized architecture. So if you're above that, you have a higher flit latency, which is worse. And if you're below, you have a better flit latency, which is better. So what you can see is like that the baseline and pseudonymism chronos design both perform worse than our optimized architecture, so you would always prefer our optimized design. In terms of the asynchronous design, again what we have saw, seen in the previous slides with uniform random traffic pattern, you can see it here as well. So in general your performance for the asynchronous design is in terms of latency better, but there are some cases where you actually have worse performance. So here the finding is you really have to take an in-depth look at your traffic pattern if you want to compare the asynchronous design versus our optimized design. And it depends on your specific uh, needs and requirements and also your specific traffic pattern, which of those designs is better suited for you. To sum this up, in green is when we perform better and red is when we perform worse with our optimized architecture. And what you can see for real-world traffic patterns, we are 49 to 30% better in terms of latency versus the baseline design. We are 33 to 60% better versus the pseudo-mesochronous router. But for comparing to the asynchronous router, we can either have a 2x performance penalty or 4.5% better latency. So you really have to take an in-depth look here. Okay, so now I've showed you all the results and I hope I could convince you that our architecture has some real advantages versus state of the art. So let's conclude this with like one large table that enables you as an architect to just take a short look and see if that's what I want. So this is the architecture I'm going to go for. So we are comparing our proposed heterogeneous synchronous architectures with the three existing solutions on the market. And we start with the homogeneous synchronous design. And we think the story here is really short. We outperform it in all metrics. So we are 48 to 50% better in terms of area. We are 4 to 37% better in terms of power. We have 6 to 36% better latency and up to 15% better throughput. Without any additional considerations, as long as a vc design is a design that is okay for you. It might be required from your um, routing algorithm to keep deadlock freedom to have VCs in your network. If so, you have to find another solution for deadlock freedom, but as long as you are fine with vc routers and mixed signal layers, I think this is really compelling and you should go for our solution. If we compare against the 
homogeneous asynchronous design. Again, we have better area and power. And this is, I think, at such already a very compelling argument. But then if you take a look at performance, it depends on your needs. So it first depends on your traffic pattern, whether you will actually see a performance improvement in terms of average bridge latency. And then also our design will always give you better throughput. So it depends on whether you need the throughput or whether you need the average fridge latency and your traffic pattern actually yields a better fridge latency. And one important additional consideration is that you need a synchronization logic for asynchronous design, which may, might make your physical design much more complicated. So keep that in mind. Regarding the pseudo-mesochronous router, we again see that our architecture has better area and power, which is again as such already a very compelling argument. But then we will also have better uh, average split latency between 30 and 51%. So I think this really gives a strong argument towards the new proposed optimized architecture, even though both can yield the same throughput based on their design. And there are some additional considerations that you have to keep in mind. So the first one is that you have in our optimized design a much reduced number of vertical links which will improve your yield significantly and as long as yield is such an important consideration for 3D integration, I think this is a really important argument here. And also you will have fewer clock regions in your design because your design can run synchronous and this should make your physical design effort much easier. So in our opinion we have mission accomplished here, so we have proposed a design that is better in area and power and also in most cases better in terms of performance. And what we claim that we can bridge this frequency gap, I think we really have achieved that. And this is especially shown by the promising throughput results of our architecture. Thank you for your kind attention.